Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zed here, back at it again to drop What if Deku was the reincarnation, just kidding, it's not a reincarnation video, not this time at least This time, we're gonna be doing What if Deku was the Winter Soldier Now guys, this idea is something that I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna do completely off the top of my head There's not exactly gonna be any script, I've just been thinking about this all day ever since I got to school And so I figured that I would drop this For those of you who are waiting for What if Deku was Jirai's reincarnation part 2, that is going to be dropping tomorrow tomorrow along with the winter soldier what if as well with that being said i hope you guys go on to enjoy the video just to just so you know this is going to be a sponsored one so midway through the video i'll probably do some talking about that as well as make sure to check out my links in the description but with that being said let's get right into the what if All right, so uh, let's see. Where do I want to start this one? All right, so we're going to be starting this what if all off on the day that Deku was born. Just like any My Hero Academia story, we're going to have to be covering his backstory. In this version, Deku's not going to be living in the same place that he was in canon. Inko and Isashi are still both going to be Deku's parents, and Deku is actually in this version still going to be having the green hair. However, the reason that he's going to be having the Black Winter Soldier hair later on in the video is going to be because of something that I'll make up later on. I haven't really thought that far ahead. Oh, and also, can you guys rate the thumbnail? I think the thumbnail looks pretty dope. The green star on the Winter Soldier looks pretty badass. And uh, I really like the, I'm really digging the text for this what if. So, you know, if you guys like the thumbnail, definitely make sure to let me know. That being said, though, guys, Deku was going to be born, uh, let's see. Deku's going to be born more towards like the, more towards like, I don't know what it's called. I'm pretty sure we're in urban. So he's going to be born in the rural stuff where, you know, it's more like country stuff like that. And Hisashi and Inko are both going to be like little high school sweethearts. You know what I mean? They're going to both meet in high school. They had a kid at a pretty early age. And Hisashi and Inko both had some problems as soon as Deku was born. Money problems concerning how they were going to, you know, co cope with having a kid at such a young age. And Things like, oh, you know, now they have to be held down by this and that and all this stuff. And so Deku and, Hisa Deku and you know, Hisashi and Inko had it, you know, kind of rough when they were first getting along. They tried and they tried and they tried, but they were just struggling. So Hisashi and Inko, about a couple years later, four years to be exact, actually ended up deciding, no, three years, sorry, three years actually, ends up deciding that, you know, you know what, they're just going to split. They're clearly not right for each other. They seem to be in a pretty toxic relationship, so they both decide to honestly just divorce they end up breaking up and so life ends up getting pretty shitty from this point on for Deku after that point Deku ends up having some pretty a pretty bad home life about after the point that that ends up happening Inko and Deku weren't exactly in the best terms she proceeds to proceed uh neglecting Deku she would always have different guys over and Inko would just generally be a horrible mother to Deku that being said Hisashi wouldn't be on the best side of everything either. Hisashi is going to have a horrible relationship with Deku. He would often beat Deku and blame him for the fact that he and Inko are no longer together. Even though it was the fact that he and Inko long ago ended up slowly just perishing in terms of the relationship. It honestly was not going to work the way that things played out in this version. So, Hisashi, not wanting to push the blame on himself, would honestly just continue doing it on Deku. And this would lead to a horrible cycle where Hisashi would constantly beat on Deku, berate him, and even be the one who ends up actually giving Deku the name of Deku itself. That being said, he would have a pretty horrible life. This is when Deku would finally get the worst news of his life that I think he's ever going to get. By the age of four, he would be told that he's quirkless. And there's not a thing that he's going to be able to do about it. Deku is going to be quirkless. And that's it. No quirk in this version. Winter Soldier Deku is not going to have this great story. It's going to be pretty dark at first. Or, a, or at least his backstory will. That being said, this is when Deku, about two years after that point, being told that he was quirkless, Hisashi continued berating Deku. Now not only blaming him for the fact that he and Inko were divorced, but also calling him useless. He's not even going to be able to become a hero in the future. Pathetic. He would wish that he was never born. Maybe Inko should have swallowed. 
<laughs> all right, I'm sorry, boys. I, I, I could not hold it back after I... Ooh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. If anybody has made it this far, then uh, I'm... Uh, <laughs> And uh, maybe leave a comment down below. Maybe a reference to this uh, little joke that I just made. Maybe, maybe. Anyways, uh, let's continue this story. So, yeah. As I said, Deku's life, not exactly going to be the best thing in the world, right? And we're just going to basically, as I said, have a little bit of a two-year time skip. Deku, after being announced quirkless, life gets worse. And one day, everything actually is going to change. One day, a bunch of men would arrive in Vance. As this is when they would knock on the door... Deku would immediately get yelled at by his father as he would hear, Deku, go on to the door. This is when Deku would say, K okay, dad, as he would rush over the door and say, who is it? This is when two men would say, uh, we are uh, officers, as Deku would say, oh, police. This is when he would open the door and Asashi, hearing Deku say police, would immediately go over there as he would be wearing his underwear and just having a beer bottle in his hand. This is when they would both be wearing suits as they would say, may we come in. Hisashi would say, what are you here for? As they would say, we offer you a proposal. This is when Hisashi would say, uh, yeah, come in. As it's at this point that the men would walk inside of the house and Deku would be sitting alongside his father, a decent distance away so that his father can't beat on him. But Deku would just kind of be scared of both the men as his father. As they would begin to talk, they would say, all right, so we're going to get to business and not waste any of your time. We want to take your son from you. As, the, as Hisashi would say, you want to take my kid? Why would you want this useless bastard? As at this point that the men would just say, and we're willing to offer you a big amount of cash for him. This is when Asashi would say, I'm listening. They would say, for $17, we want to take your son to use him for our own purposes. Will we tell you what they are? No, but you're just going to have to trust the fact that he's quirkless and this is why we want him. Asashi would say, interesting. I was just about to ask you why, but after hearing the fact that he's quirkless, looks like he was useful for something after all. This is when he would say, I need proof of the money. As he would say, all right, what is your bank account? They would immediately wire the money over to Hisashi's account as his eyes would widen seeing the, all the zeros on his account. And he would immediately tell the men that they are free to do whatever they like with Deku. Deku's eyes would widen as he would realize what just happened. As he would begin to try to run away, but the men would go over to Deku grabbing him by the arms and legs. And they would tell him that he has to go with them. He's their property now. This is when Deku would try to tug away, as he would see his father cheering, smiling, waving to his son goodbye, goodbye, just telling him that maybe he was useful for something. Deku seeing this would go limp. His, his expression, which was filled with, with wanting to fight back and looking for his father as if he was going to save him, would then turn into one of pure hatred, disgust, pure anger. This is when Deku would look towards his father's direction as he would say, you're just gonna let me go like that? He would then proceed to basically just go with the men. As he would step inside of the van and say, Wherever you're taking me, just do it. It's not like I'm wanted by anybody anyways. He would sob inside of his shirt as a man would go over to Deku and pull him in for a hug. He would then say, Don't worry, kid. We're gonna take you somewhere where it'll seem like paradise compared to that hell hole. This is when Deku would arrive at a private facility for future super soldiers. Or so they would hope. They would have ended up actually kidnapping and taking away some kids that are quirkless as well. From parents who actually ended up denying the money. And some others who did the same thing as Deku's father. Deku's dad, Asashi, would end up taking the money and leaving. Not telling Inko a word about what happened to Deku or anything. Inko being the person she is would not care at all. And Asashi would go on to be a, a rich guy who would end up staying in America. Because that's exactly what Asashi is. He's American. While Inko, she was Japanese. Japanese woman living in America. That being said, this is when Deku would begin to get trained from a young age. And you guys are probably wondering how exactly I'm going to be covering this little training arc and all this stuff. Well, not really. I'm not really going to be covering the training as much. I mean, if you guys have watched the Winter Soldier stuff, or you've seen the Captain America movie, or you simply just clicked on the video because it's his other one, well, I'm going to explain what the Winter Soldier is now. I know. A little late, but, you know, pretty dope. Alright, so the Winter Soldier, from my common and basic knowledge, is basically just this guy with a cybernetic arm, similar to Captain America. He's pretty strong, he's a super soldier, and, uh, yeah, he's he's badass, man. He's, like, in the Marvel movies, he's pretty cool. So, if you haven't seen the Captain America movies, go watch him. For those of you who are super big, like, Winter Soldier fans, and you just got so hurt by the fact that I don't really know too much about him, stories are really going to be too much related to that. It's kind of just going to be, like, a super soldier story, so... 
uh, yeah, for anybody wondering, that's basically what the story is going to be. That being said, this is when Deku would begin to get trained from a young age and do the exact same training as, well, Bucky did in the, um, you know, the Winter Soldier did. Not Bucky, since a lot of people probably know him as the Winter Soldier. But, yeah, he would pretty much do a bunch of, uh, you know, Super Soldier training from a young age. And they would basically begin to train these kids from a very, very young age. Some being six, some four, some eight years old, up until the point where they were 14 years old. Where this is the day that they were going to be injecting them with the Super Serum Toxin. This is what I'm now going to be telling you guys about a small detail that I definitely forgot. Deku around the age of 11 would actually end up losing his arm in training. And not only that, but he would end up losing his arm and part of him as well. He would have been doing a little bit of sparring with another person. They would have been doing some hand-to-hand -hand combat with knives. And one of them would have ended up actually doing katana training. That is when Deku ended up coming in to block the, the strike, but... Not, but he wasn't actually able to block it, and therefore the katana ended up slicing Deku's arm completely off. This is when Deku would end up getting cybernetic arm implanted into himself, and this is how Deku would get the Winter Soldier arm. It would be genetically modified so that it has enhanced superhuman strength into it, and Deku is just going to be a different type of beast. That being said, Deku would begin to learn how to use it and implement it as if it was his normal arm, as if he never ever lost an arm in the first place. And Deku would train and train and train. Deku would have some pretty fire, fire, fire apparel or merch. And uh, in case you're wondering why I said apparel and merch, well, uh, it's because now I'm finally going to be telling you guys about the sponsor of today's video. Take it away, future Zether. All right, so now it's time to tell you guys about Fandom. Now, Fandom is an online merch store company that sells pretty much anime apparel. Anything ranging from My Hero Academia to One Piece, from Demon Slayer to Naruto. They have a bunch of options to choose from. And up on screen right now, you guys should be able to see a bunch of options. Whether it be Tokyo Revengers, maybe I might put One Punch Man, maybe not. Maybe there will be Jujutsu Kaisen up there. Maybe there will be... Um, it's another anime that I can think of. Dragon Ball. Maybe Dragon Ball might be there. They have pretty much any anime merch that you guys would want to wear. They pretty much have it. And it's at a very reasonable price. Seeing as right now, they're having a 50% sale on their already affordable stuff. So if you've ever wanted to get yourself some anime apparel, then I would definitely suggest going to Fandom. Anytime you guys go out there and you guys see a shirt or design that's from an anime, like, store-ish thing, they're always overpriced. See, a normal shirt that you'll find at a store will probably run run you about $30. On fandom, it'll be way cheaper. A hoodie? Don't even talk about how expensive a hoodie would be at a real store. And not only that, but fandom does very good rates when it comes to shipping. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go shop at fandom now. And with my code Zether, you can even get 5% off your order. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you guys go on to fandom and copy yourself some merch for your boy. That being said, Zether out. All right, all right. So after the sponsor, I'm pretty sure many of you guys are wanting to get back into the video. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right. So after this, this is when the day would come where Deku would finally be injected. After all those years of harsh training, his hair would be long and De Deku would be one of the most skilled fighters there. Only taught by another name, another boy by the name of Logan. That boy would have been one of the strongest per people that Deku's ever met with one of the strongest wills ever. He would have engraved the idea of hard work into Deku from a young age. And he was actually a Japanese boy who had aspirations to become a pro hero someday. That's where Deku would know about being a pro hero and all that stuff from. Not only that, but you know, it's definitely a thing in America. So Deku always knew about that. Always wanted to be a hero someday, but seeing as Deku's quirkless, he never believed he could, but with his training, maybe. Maybe he could be put to use and not just be a super soldier. Maybe he could be a pro hero someday, after the fact. This is when Deku would go into a lab where they would be prepared to be injected with the super soldier serum. This is when all of the people would get into a single file line. It would be eight kids. People who Deku had grown up with ever since he was the age of six years old. People who he considered his comrades, his friends, his brothers and sisters. They would be injected with the toxins as they would go in a single file line, all going in at not at the same time, but just trying to test the waters. Each and every single one of them would die. Not a single one of them would survive the toxin. About 
about all of them would have a black substance come out of their mouth. Similar to blood, it would leak out of them profusely, and they would all die to that same fate. This is when Deku, after seeing this, would be terrified, saying, No! No! Don't inject me with that! I'll die! I'll die just like the rest of them! And everybody would begin to hold him down, trying to tell Deku to calm down, that it's gonna be okay, he may be the only survivor. The soldier which actually told Deku and comforted him would tell Deku to not think too much about it. But this is when Deku would remember one thing that his old buddy Logan told him. Fight. Fight for everything. This world is horrible. You're going to have to fight for your life if you ever want to make something out of yourself. And so Deku, hearing those words inside of his head, would then say, No! He would swing as the man would get flung into the wall, and Deku would begin to beat everybody, beating people's skulls in, and basically grabbing some syringes, injecting it into the doctor who was actually doing the experiment the doctor would fall onto the ground with a black liquid coming out of his mouth and everybody would begin to get basically put on a t-shirt by deku deku would escape barely as a bunch of soldiers would try to hold deku back but deku would put on armor and immediately escape as fast as he possibly could this is when deku would basically end up uh just rushing out of there as fast as he possibly could with one thing going through his head the this this he would basically have one thing just flashing back and forth the death of his friend logan he was the closest one deku had he was truly like a brother to deku and he died right before him he wasn't able to do a thing but what he will do is live out his goals and aspirations through himself deku would push hard as he would destroy anybody who would stand in his way and deku would finally make it out of the facility he would use his silent tactics and training to not be discovered as he would leave the facility as fast as he could barely escaping with his life he would have a bullet hole but deku would be able to take the bullet out and patch himself up as this is when deku would go undercover deku would go by as he would see a, a hanging rack and basically grab a jacket he would put it over himself as it would be about the time of of winter and deku would end up grabbing the the, the thing as he would pretty much end up basically laying out a plan trying to figure out where he's going to go to lay low when he would get the idea and remember that they have no jurisdiction over japan none whatsoever so if deku is to be able to make it to japan that's where he can be free that's where deku can truly truly live his life free from the free from the chains which he has always been tied down to at this point deku is as i said 14 years old not only that but he doesn't really know too much about the world only what he was taught of course he's extremely intelligent in this version of events but when it comes to normal things that many people would know like common sense and stuff like that deku doesn't exactly act like somebody who's a normal 14 year old he's far more mature for his age that being said this is when Deku would basically kind of make his way over to Japan. It would be hard. It'd be treacherous. He would have to steal a man's ID. He would have to basically fake being him, get on the plane to Japan. Not only that, but a man would have actually almost recognized him had it not been for the fact that um, a, a villain attack happened and the man had to basically go stop it. This is when Deku made it on the plane and flew to Japan as fast as he possibly could. He would have mugged the man for the money to make it for the plane ticket. And this is when Deku would make it to Japan. He would arrive as he would get all of his things together. And by things, I mean his jacket and a water bottle. And Deku would then finally begin to make his way over to Japan where he steps on the soil. And as soon as he gets there, he would begin to cry tears of joy, saying that he finally did it. He would scream Logan out at the top of his lungs as he would say, We're going to make this dream a reality. This is when Deku would pretty much proceed to go to a homeless shelter far clo very close to the area of which where Deku lives at where the school was at where the sludge villain incident happens and we're going to be saying that the sludge villain incident happens about two weeks uh, about a month after this so Deku after arriving would get to a homeless shelter where Deku would then clean himself up and begin to look for a job he would be on the search for it for about a week where he would finally get an interview and he would get the job he would basically have a store right across from the bank which is going to inevitably be robbed by the sludge villain and that's where deku is going to be working during this time deku would be learning the language which is foreign to him he knew a little bit about japanese language seeing as he was taught about it so deku basically was just refining it and getting accustomed to the culture deku was sitting there as you know, Deku is half Japanese, so it's not exactly hard for him. It's in his blood, after all. So, 
Deku basically ends up learning a little things little by little, and this is when Deku would finally begin to make a little bit of money for himself. He would then finally start to rent a hotel, seeing as it kind of sucked being at a homeless shelter with people who smell bad, people with addictions to things, and Deku just was not in a good environment. So he got a very low-ranked hotel where he would be staying at for the next couple of uh, for, for the foreseeable future until he can make enough money to ba basically get himself an apartment, or he can make a friend where he can live out. This is when Deku would be in the store, as he would be on his break, and this is when about two weeks would have gone by. Deku would have been working at the store for about one week, as Deku would be working and he would then basically just be sitting there drinking his, uh, let's say, what's my girl's, alright, he's gonna be drinking a boba tea just because that's what my girl's, that's my uh, girlfriend's favorite drink, so yeah, that's what he's gonna be drinking, and so Deku would just be chilling there. As this is when he would see a green substance break out of a bank store with a bunch of money on hand. And Deku, after seeing this, his instincts would immediately act. Deku's body would simply move as another man who he would notice, a skinny man, would turn into All Might right before his eyes. As Deku would act way faster than All Might, blitzing straight towards the sludge villain. As Deku would jump up into the air and his arm would basically transform as it would turn cybernetic. As his arm basically has cloaking technology which makes it look like a normal arm. But it would turn silver with a green star on it. And the arm would then basically go purple or no green. It would have a flash of green electricity as he would punch down at the ground causing a sonic boom to appear. Causing the sludge villain to get dispersed everywhere and the sludge villain would basically get dispersed all over the place. All Might seeing this would smirk and say, whoa, looks like you're a fine hero yourself. What's your name, kid? Deku would immediately tell All Might his name as he would say, oh, break's over, gotta go. His arm would go back to normal as All Might would say, this kid, he's amazing. He did that flawlessly with little property damage. I know I said it caused a sonic boom, but he punched into the ground and caused a pretty decent sized crack to happen as the sound waves and the air pressure was what blew the, the sludge villain away. That being said, this is when Deku continued to go back to work and All Might actually waited outside of the store for Deku to finish his shift. This is when Deku would finally get his things together and end up walking over to the hotel where All Might stops him halfway along the way as he would say, I am here. Deku would say, oh, All Might, what's up? All Might would be like, not too impressed, I see. Well, you know, that's definitely a new thing. This is when Deku would say, yeah, not really too much of a big, you know, impression guy. As All Might would say, I understand, I understand. This is when he would basically look towards Deku's direction as he would say, all right, so uh, what are you doing? What are you doing here? This is when Deku would look at All Might and say, well, you know, it's my job. All Might would ask Deku what his plans are for high school. As Deku would say he's going to go into UA trying to become a hero, he would say that he's basically been training at that at a beach. As All Might would say, ah, Dagoma Beach, huh? He would then ask Deku a couple more questions, and this is when he would get to the juicy parts. As before he could actually get there, Deku would ask him why he shrank into, why he grew into his giant All Might form, asking him if he's some sort of imposter, or if he takes him for a fool. All Might would immediately get kind of worried at the fact that he already knows this, as he would say, well, kid, might as well tell you anyways. He would begin to explain why that is, and he would explain one for all to Deku, asking him if you would be willing to take the quirk. Deku would pause for a moment as he would say that he doesn't know. He would immediately think back to how his friend Logan wanted to be a hero and he would have done anything in the world to become a pro. As Deku would think that if he was here, he would have definitely told them to take this opportunity. So Deku would say, yeah, maybe he does want the quirk. As he would say, so what does he have to do if he does want it? All Might would then begin to explain what it is that he has to do for, to gain access to the quirk. And Deku would smirk as he would say, so that's it. I just have to train with you for a couple of months. All Might would say, that's basically it. As this is when Deku would smirk and say, all right, so where do we begin? All Might would say, we begin training right now. They would immediately go to the beach. As on the next part is when I'm going to be covering the Dagoma Beach training, the 10 months, the quirk apprehension test, the, the little exam to UA, and all of the other things that come with My Hero Academia What Ifs. That being said, if you guys went on to enjoy the video, please, please, please smash the like button, seeing as it helps so much with the algorithm, as well as hit that subscribe button, seeing as I'm trying to get to 25k subscribers by the end of next month. I'm actually, no, 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 that goes small. 
I'm trying to get to 30k subscribers by the end of the year. So if you guys could subscribe, that would mean the world to me. That being said, I love each and every single one of you guys. Make sure to check the links under the description and my sponsor my sponsor fandom and uh with that said that's basically gonna be it for me today bye